happy day. Joy in my feet, joy in my hands, joy in every way. God took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire. Now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I got the joy, joy, joy in my soul. Amen. I got the joy, joy, joy in my soul. And I pray you do too today. I love to hear that song. It makes me happy every time I hear it. I've said this many times before. I should have wrote the song. <laughs> because that's exactly what happened in my life. When I gave up all those worldly desires in my life to receive Jesus into my life as my Lord and Savior. Wow. That's the day I met this man called Jesus Christ. And I'm excited about the programs. In fact, the next two weeks, today and next week, it's a continuance because I'm, we are talking about I love to tell the story. And I do love the Christmas story. Remember that old hymn? I love to tell the story. Twill be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story. Not only at this Christmas season, but every day, every chance I get. <laughs> Some people say, that's all you ever talk about. Well, that's because Jesus is my life. And I know that there are people out in the world today hurting, depressed, hopeless, and lost. And I need to share what Jesus, God, has done in my life. So that's what this is going to be about this week and next week. And I have um, invited a very familiar person to you. She had a program here on WTJR for a few years. And she's also a volunteer. If you watch Pray 16, you'll see her answering the phones. We want to welcome Phyllis Metzger. God bless you, dear. Yes. Good friend. Thank you. I'm, I'll tell you, her and I, this brings back good memories because I've sat in your home at Bible studies, and yes. we've had our Bibles open, and just talk about the Lord. Enjoy. It's just a joy, isn't it? Yes, it was. Just a joy. And uh, the <laughs> program that Phyllis uh, hosted was Overcoming Grace. And what, now I know you took that over, Marty, your husband, hosted that first, mm -hmm. and you said for about the last three years you were the host, but what did he say that stood for, the Overcoming Grace? It's the grace to overcome the world, and the flesh and the devil. Amen. And he always said, it's the power of God within me to help me to live the overcoming life. That Amen. grace, the grace of God. Amen. Amen. So Amen. It's powerful, the grace of God. And that babe born in a manger Amen. thousands of years ago yeah. brought that grace to That's this right. world. That's right. Amen. It, what's it say? It was full of grace and truth. Yes. Jesus was full Amen. of grace and truth. Amen. Wonderful Savior. Yeah. Wonderful Savior. Well, I'm excited about the programs, Phyllis, and I, you're going to see me getting happy, and I'm sure you're going to get happy, too, <laughs> as we share a lot of scriptures with you today. The Word of God. You know, I encourage you all the time to get in the Word of God, and especially this season. Get in and read the Christmas stories, even though we're going to share them with you. You know, uh, read about Jesus' life, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay? Uh, look up about the angels, the shepherds the wise man and we've got some information we're going to share with you today but there are so many details it's more than just the babe born in a manger it goes beyond that it goes clear back to the beginning of existence with God clear back so let's read our scripture for today we're going to open with a scripture from Luke 2 10 and it said and the angel said unto them Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Fear not. And you know, God knew that joy would overpower or eliminate fear. fear. Amen. Joy. You can't be joyful and fearful at the same time. And he had good tidings of great joy. And it was for all people, not just for Phyllis, not just for me, not just for pastors, but for you too. All 
people that have ever been before us, living now, and those that will come after us. All people. <clears throat> I looked up good tidings. I like to know what words mean. And that's part of studying. You meditate on God's word. And you look up word meanings. And, and cross-reference other scriptures. But good tidings is good news, of course. And also, in the New Testament, they use especially uh, glad tidings of the coming kingdom of God. That's what the shepherds were announcing Glad tidings of the coming kingdom of God and of the salvation to be obtained in through Christ and of what relates to this salvation. That's the good news. And we're going to talk about that today on A Woman's Joy. Amen. I love to tell the story. You know, there's a time for everything. Ecclesiastics talks about that, Phyllis. There's a time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and sometimes we go are going through different seasons. We don't always understand. That's exactly right. But it's God's time. And in Galatians 4.4, 4, that's the first scripture I want to share with you today. It said, but when the fullness of time has come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. And I'm going to have Phyllis read a scripture that gives you some more insight of going clear back to the beginning of time. John 1, 1 through 14. You know, on that, on this fear, I was told there's 365 times mm -hmm. in the Bible where it tells us to fear not. not. Fear not. Amen. Okay, this is uh, John 1, 1 to 14. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the word... And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him mm -hmm. might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming mm. into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Mm -hmm. And the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Amen. Amen. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. Ooh, full way. of grace and truth. <laughs> there you go. Amen. There you go. That was right out of the Bible when you said grace and truth, wasn't it? Amen. 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 In the beginning was the word. And if you go back to Genesis, we know that God spoke. He said that word came forth and creation came about. The word was there with God in the beginning. There's 300 promises made about Jesus in the Old Testament. And you know what? God kept them all. Because he's truth. He's truth. God always keeps his promises. Write this down, okay? I hope you got a paper and pencil so you can write all these scriptures. Yes. And read them again yes. later, okay? God always keeps his promises. And here's just a few of them. Here's one from Micah 5.2. Did you know about this scripture? But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrath, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Amen. Prophesying of the coming of Jesus. Yes. There's one in Isaiah 7.14. You want to read that, Phyllis? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, 
and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Amen. Amen. And that was many, many, many years oh my goodness. before Jesus was even born. This was prophesied in the Bible. And one more of Hosea. And I love Hosea. And we always call that the love story in there with Hosea and Gomer. But 11, chapter 11, verse 1. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Amen. What happened with Joseph and Mary? They got called out of Egypt. Prophesying once again. Well, there were 400 years between Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament, and Matthew, which is the first gospel in the New Testament. The people waited with faith. Yes. 400 years, Phyllis. They waited for that promise of a Messiah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Right? Amen. <laughs> I Amen. want to read this one, yes. Donette, from Isaiah 9, 6. I mm -hmm. love this one. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And then there was another one. Moses prophesied Jesus' birth in Deut Deuteronomy 18, 15. Mm -hmm. The Lord thy God will raise up unto you a prophet from the midst of you, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him, Jesus, you shall listen. So it's just over and over. How many did you say there were? There are over 300, 300 promises, prophecies. Promises, promises of Jesus coming. Amen. And you know, in my Bible, and a lot of Bibles, it's marked. I, mine has a star beside those verses. And then it gives you a, a reference back into the New Testament. So you can read it in the New Testament also. 300 promises wow. made about Jesus. What a mighty God we Amen. serve. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Uh, and I'll tell you, there was a lot of details. You know, a lot of us don't like to read the genealogy <laughs> part, portions of the Bible, but that was so important. Yes, it was. Very much yes, so. Yes, because Jesus would come out of the lineage of David. Yes, ma'am. So all the people back had to be put into place. Clear back. You know, even Joseph and Mary, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but 400 years, when I think about that, Today, if we don't get instant <laughs> answers or feel like God's here with us, we, we give up. We want to give up already. We think, well, where's God? Why don't, I, why don't I feel God? It's like I told my daughter the other day. It's not a feeling. It's a knowing. Yes. Faith is knowing. And you know it because you have read this word you have a personal relationship with Jesus and you know that God is truth. Amen. So what he says, he will fulfill. Amen. But 400 years. A long time. And God <clears throat> didn't even speak to the people. No, they never heard from him those no. 400 years. Before that, he traveled with them. You know, when the Israelites were out in the wilderness, he traveled with them. He was a pillar of fire at night. And he was a cloud in the daytime. The daytime. Keep the heat off. So they them. always knew. Now I know God is ever present with me. And I am so thankful. My mother and father taught me this. That when I wake up, I know God's here. They always said, God's here with you. So I believe that. Yep. So when I wake up, I know God is here with me. But there are people that don't know that. You know, Don, that when you're taught that as a little child, uh -huh. it sticks with you. You believe uh -huh. it. Mm -hmm. You believe it as a little child. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so wonderful if parents are saved. Yes. And then they can bring their little children up just knowing the word of God and knowing about Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's so wonderful. So and wonderful. And they never forget it. Never. Never forget it. This time of the year... It's so important you share this Christmas story with your children. And I don't care if they're little tiny babies. You can tell them about Jesus. And my grandson, my youngest one, um, when he was a year old last year, someone had given me a magnetic uh, nativity to put on the refrigerator. And I got that, and I got down on a chair so I could sit down low, and he stood there. And we would put those magnet 
Joseph and, and Mary mm -hmm. and the baby and the sheep and the star. He liked the star, really liked the yeah. star. And I read out of the Bible the little Christmas story to him. And I plan on doing that again this year because I want him to know about Jesus. I love Donette how he praises the Lord. He just praises the Lord. He does. Oh. And he prays. He'll pray. He comes up and lays hands on people and prays for them. Mm. He prays at night when go to bed. He prays at mealtime. Mm. And he prays for grandma and mommy and <laughs> mentions different people's name. But it's because you, we're training him. We're teaching him yes. about the Lord. So please read the Christmas story to your children. When my kids were growing up, I have five children. Many of you already knew that, and some maybe are new to the program. Um, and uh, on Christmas Eve, we started making a Christmas cake. Happy birthday, Jesus. We made a cake, and we put candles on it. Because my number three son, one year, when he was about this high... <laughs> <laughs> looked at me with these big brown eyes and said, if it's Jesus' birthday, how come we don't have a birthday cake for Jesus? Well, I said, that makes a lot of sense. We should do that. So we started making a cake oh, that's wonderful. for Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. We put candles on it. We wrote, happy birthday, Jesus, on it. We would sing, happy birthday to Jesus. We'd blow the candles out. We had cake. And then we would sit around the Christmas tree. Mm. And I would read the Christmas story. That's and wonderful. they still talk about that. Yep, they won't forget it. I didn't take them on a big expensive trip, and I didn't buy them some big outrageous toy that cost or a video game. Yep. This is what has stayed with them. So please, I know maybe you're getting tired of me saying this, but please read the Christmas story to your children, to your grandchildren, maybe your great grandchildren, because it'll be a blessing. I know it will be a blessing. Just the other day I was singing, Jesus Loves Me, this I know to my little great-granddaughter. Mm -hmm. She's three. And uh, she caught on to it pretty, pretty fast. Yes. She caught on to it pretty fast. So. They like it when we spend time with them. Oh, yeah. You know, my, uh, as I was growing up, uh, of course I didn't know, I, people called us poor. I didn't know that. I thought I was very rich. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> but anyway, at Christmas, I always remember um, my mom, when we get the newspaper, we would cut out. At that time, they used to, uh, businesses used to have ads in there, big ads. Mm -hmm. We'd cut them out, and I could, we'd color them because they would be pretty Christmas pictures, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And uh, we would color them. My mom and I would color them together. I remember stringing popcorn together to put on our tree. Christmas tree. You know, and then as I got older, I remember she let me help her put the gifts under the tree, and I thought that was great. Those are the things I remember about yeah. Christmas. That was the things we did together. Yes. And I knew it was Jesus' birthday. That's what we were celebrating. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't celebrating Santa coming, and I was celebrating Jesus, his birthday. Yep. So... Those are good memories, We're, and Great. I'm thankful for them. Amen. 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 Well, let's go on with the Christmas story. First character we're going to talk about is Mary, and she is the favored one. They called her a humble servant. And we're going to read this Christmas story, and I'm going to let Phyllis read that, but I'm going to share just, I'm going to read Luke 1, 46 and 48 for you, while Phyllis gets, uh, finds uh, the rest of the story, let's put it that way, in the Bible. But in Luke 1, 46 through 48, And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. blessed. And of course it comes from the scripture they call Mary's song. But she felt very blessed. And I think you'll understand more of that as we read the verses before and after. So Phyllis, you want to read Luke 1, 39 <clears throat> through 56. So when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. 
And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. And when they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now so it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to him and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Just think he was only 12. Yes. <laughs> so when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. He said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Mm -hmm. But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and statute and in favor with God and men. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to go back because I... I believe I got you farther along in the story that I wanted to be there. Yeah. But anyway, I'm going to go back in Luke 1. That's what I thought. And I made a mistake. How about that? <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's okay because it's, that was part of his life growing up. Yes. Amen. And uh, let's go back to uh, Luke 1. I'm going to start at 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. That's why she was called the favored one. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. God. The Son of God. Wow. And again, that's from Luke 1. Verses 26 through 35. Amen. <clears throat> when I first read this many years back, I'm, well, I shouldn't say I first read it, but I was reading it. And when I got to that where she said, Be it unto me according to thy word. <laughs> wow, God just really touched me. What faith this young girl, they said she was young, maybe around 14, 15 14, years 15, of age. Yeah. What faith for a young girl. Now she was born, she was Jewish, in a Jewish family, there in Nazareth. What great faith that young girl had. Wow. Can we say about that? It, <laughs> Be it done unto me according to your word. You know, it's total surrender to him. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he desires. Mm -hmm. Total surrender. Total surrender. Total surrender. Be it unto thou. And she didn't hear it, doesn't say that she pondered it at that moment. She just said, be it unto thee, Lord, according to your word. Be it unto thee. Well, we are getting right down. We're, we'll talk a little bit about Joseph and we'll continue on next week. But Joseph, the faithful one. And you know, we don't hear much about Joseph. No, Mary no. and baby Jesus, you know, yep. a big part of the story. But he was faithful. Now think about this. And it was his responsibility to see that God's one and only son 
was safely brought to birth. Amen. Wow. That's a responsibility. Oh, my goodness. And this young girl, much. which um, back in those days, she would have been stoned if he hadn't have stepped forth. And married her. And married her. Mm -hmm. And um, he took that on. But uh, I think we're going to have to wait till next week and we'll read why. And you'll know why he did. Because he had a visitor too. <laughs> and I'm so thankful <laughs> for those times that God visits us. And because when we read these stories which are true, we know that when God talks to us, it's true. Because <laughs> these stories were true. And we see it come to be fulfilled. And... I want to close out today with this plaque. <clears throat> I've had this for years. What can I give him? Have you ever asked yourself that? God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He gave his all. He gave his best. What can I give him? What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I was a wise man... I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? I'll give him my heart. Jesus come to seek and save the lost. We had a debt because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, Jesus Christ, salvation... It's free to those who call upon the name of the Lord. Yes, the Bible says, whosoever, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I pray you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He's just not that babe laying in a manger. No. He was born to fulfill a purpose, to bring salvation to mankind. He was born to go to the old rugged cross to shed his blood that our sins would be washed away. And because of the finished work at Calvary, the veil was rent from the top to the bottom that you and I can enter into the presence of God, Almighty God, at any time and anywhere and have that hope of glory through Jesus Christ of eternal life. If you do not know him, today is the day of salvation. Open up your heart and ask him to come in. God bless you. Have joy in your heart today. Ask Jesus in, okay? One day I was walking in a world of sin. No rest for my weary soul. Then I met a man, said he'd be my friend. All my burdens he did roll. He took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire. Now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I got the joy, joy, joy. Watch live on WTJR and Facebook, Revive America, with evangelist Robert Newton, Music by Jeff and April Davis. On Tuesday, December the 19th at 7.30 p.m., Revive America, Evangelist Robert Newton. Music by Jeff and April Davis. The Bible is unchanging and timeless.